Namaste. So today I want to talk about the master. And when I say master, I mean more than a teacher. I don't like the word guru because it has come to mean so many different and even contradictory things. Um, a guru can be a teacher of a particular skill or art or division of knowledge. A guru can be a ceremonial priest, an initiator or blesser. A guru should be actually a master. And I don't use that term lightly at all. So what, what is my concept of a master? A master is someone to whom the disciple can surrender completely. That means everything, life, property, words, whole, everything, whatever he possesses. But then, from his side, the master will take care of the disciple like a son and teach him everything he knows to attain ultimate liberation. So in my life, I've met three masters, three liberated beings who accepted me as a disciple. And that's Srila Prabhupada. He's my Adi Guru, my Diksha Guru. Osho Rajneesh, who taught me a whole bunch of things. <laughs> Not able to explain it exactly in words. And my Sanyas Guru, Jnana Shakti Swami in South India. So these three, all liberated souls, are guru or master. Because why? They are more knowledgeable than me, more experienced than me, more wealthy than me. They can take complete care like a son and they can deliver the ultimate spiritual knowledge leading to self-realization. So this is a master. Now there are many people using the terms guru and master and like this who cannot provide these things. I don't accept them as master. I don't respect them as master because I think they're misusing or abusing the term master. But let me give you a concrete example. My Adi Guru, Srila Prabhupada. I was studying Indian music in California at the school of Ali Akbar Khan in San Rafael. And Khan Saab took me aside one day and he said, you know, you're just not cut out to be a concert musician. Because that was the track I was on, you know, studying to be a performer. He said, it's not your nature to travel and perform. And then there's all this competition and criticism. And it's very stressful. You wouldn't like it at all. It wouldn't be good for you either. Now, this is someone who is a guru in the field of music. And he's seen countless examples of how musicians develop because he was involved in the process of training himself and so on. So he knew better than me, you know. So at least in that area, I could accept him as guru. So then he said, I'm going to take you to meet my 
Dear childhood friend from Kolkata, Abhay Charande, now known as Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. So we went into San Francisco and he introduced me and there was a, a conversation in Bengali, which I couldn't follow at all. <laughs> and then Prabhupada invited me. You come here, become my disciple, stay here, we take care of everything. All you have to do is follow the program. And the program, of course, is a complete instruction in bhakti yoga. It took me three years <laughs> before I was ready. But then I finally surrendered to him. And I stayed in a couple of his temples in the U.S. for a few months and then went to India, where he, he literally took complete charge of my life. I always had a place to stay. I always had wonderful food, <laughs> good companionship. And of course, the teachings and lessons. I mean, his knowledge was so, few, so far beyond mine at the time. It was inconceivable to me, like where he was at. Now I can understand <laughs> because I've attained the realization. But in those days, he was like so far beyond me, I couldn't even imagine. That's master. So recently I was trying to put together a tantric retreat so that I could do a particular sadhana, which I very much want to do. But I was unable to find anyone who has even like basic knowledge of Tantra. Yet they want to call themselves master. But they couldn't accommodate me. They couldn't afford to feed me and house me and take care of my medical expense and all of that. Huh? I mean, even in Sri Lanka, when I was a Buddhist monk, and even afterwards, when I would visit certain monasteries, they would always invite me here, stay here whole life. We take care of everything, medical, dental, whatever you need. You know, you just stay here and meditate. And of course, then I would have to be a monk in that lineage and so on. But anyway, that's master. Now, I'm at the stage of my life where I can say, yeah, I'm a master. I'm fully self-realized. But I'm not interested in making money or preaching on a big scale or making an organization. So I could accommodate one disciple. See, and until that person shows up, I'm not a guru. Because guruship or mastership is in the relationship between the guru and the disciple. See, if someone can come to me and surrender and I can take care of them and give them everything they need, then I can call myself guru or master. Not until then. But the thing about the master or the guru is that the guru is the path. This series is about the path. So when you surrender to a guru, the guru guides you, if necessary, pushes you even to make advancement on the path and gives you all the necessary tools and qualifications, resources, and so on to perform that sadhana and educates you in the background knowledge and so on. Now, I've managed to do that here on the channel. If you go back and review all the previous series, you'll find everything you need in terms of knowledge, how to advance on the spiritual path, really in any mode that you desire or in any stage of the path that you find yourself on. 
And if you want to come here and surrender, I can take care of you. But you have to make a lifetime commitment. That's the thing. It's like marriage. Until death do us part. When Prabhupada passed away in 1977, I was devastated because here this person that I had come to depend on completely was gone. And uh, this is another lesson on the path. When the guru disappears, then the next thing is you have to become guru yourself. This is the test. You have to, in other words, realize the knowledge that you were given. Knowledge is just theory. Practice is the application. Realization is the fruit of that knowledge and practice. So unless one can attain realization based on the Guru's teachings, then it's not the real thing. You have to see that, oh, other people have come to this guru and they have attained realization, or other people have studied with this guru or whatever, and they attained something. But even that is not a reliable indicator. I would say the most reliable indicator is love. The master should have genuine love for the disciple. Prabhupada treated me like a son. He took such good care of me. He never chastised me, ever, not once, even though he was well known for his fiery <laughs> chastisements of his disciples. And he also gave me the highest name in the Vaishnava lineage. Das Anu Das. So he knew. He knew me. He could see deep into me. He could see exactly my nature and named me appropriately. Nobody else has been able to do that. <laughs> so he was unique in my experience. A very, very wealthy and powerful man taking the time to take care of me and give me full facility and full freedom anywhere in any of his temples in any part of the world. And I took full advantage of that, traveled all over the world doing kirtan, bhajan, puja, uh, and got so much uh, punya, so much good karma, that I was able to go on even beyond his teaching to the Advaita teachings and so on like that. So real guru, real master is like the incarnation of the path. He is one who has been to the end of the path. And now he's coming back and, and saying, oh, out of compassion and love, I want to help you advance. I want to bring you to the same stage as I am. Unfortunately, so many so-called masters and gurus today are simply uh, sociopaths using the, or misusing the title master or guru or whatever to manipulate people and, and take advantage, exploit. Um, so, actually, these words have got a bad connotation in today's society. Nobody wants to surrender because nobody can trust. Uh, and we've also been deceived by others. So we know this is possible. But you have to take that risk. If you really want self-realization to approach a bona fide guru or spiritual master, and surrender everything. Make a lifetime commitment to their service. That is the key to attaining complete enlightenment. 
Aung Tat Sat, Aung Shakti Aung.